Hi, I'm Gregory Hayes with Make. Today's weekend project is the Monobox, a portable powered speaker for your music player. You'll learn how to solder an audio amplifier using a microchip, how to choose a speaker, and install it in a cabinet of your choice. Make contributor Ross Hirschberger designed the Monobox to run on anywhere from 6 to 15 volts, so you can take it anywhere, run it off wall power, your car's accessory outlet, or even a 9 volt battery. Of course, the big question is, does it rock? It has been thoroughly tested, and the answer is, it does indeed rock. And with the added bass boost, it might even rock your socks off. The Monobox rocks because this little amplifier is efficient. It uses the LM386 Power Amplifier Microchip, the same chip that's in guitar preamps and those little Marshall Practice amps. Most small speakers need a bass boost, so Ross also designed this amp with a high-pass feedback loop that reduces frequencies above 200 Hz to boost that bass. Full build instructions, circuit diagrams, and photos can be found on the project page. Let's get started. You'll need the following parts for this build. You'll also need these tools. To house your mono box, you can use an old wooden cigar box, a lunch box, a small tool box, or a ready-made electronics enclosure. Almost any cabinet will work, but we recommend something 1 8 to 1 quarter of a cubic foot in volume. Just make sure it's deep enough for your speaker driver and has a good surface to mount the speaker to. You'll get your best bass if you can seal the box completely. The quality of sound you'll get depends on the speaker you choose. Individual speaker units like this are called drivers. Look for a driver at least 3 inches in size that's described as full range. This type will reproduce the entire frequency range of sound. For more tips on choosing a good driver, check the project page. Now you'll build the guts of the mono box, the amplifier's circuit board. This printed circuit board has 20 copper traces, and each trace has 5 holes. To keep track of everything, we'll label the board first. Label the traces on the soldering side of the board from 1 to 20, and then repeat for the component side of the board, keeping in mind that the order of the numbers will be reversed once the board is flipped over. Then label the holes on the component side of the board, A through E, beginning with A in the center of the board and moving outward towards the edge. Component connections will be called out based on this number and letter coordinate system, so make sure you follow it exactly. Begin by installing the socket for the amp chip into the board, as shown on the project page, making sure the notch on the socket body is pointed towards the edge of the board. Now, following the directions on the project page, solder each capacitor in place and clip the leads. Then add three resistors in the same way, placing and soldering them in place as described on the project page. Next, we'll add jumper wires to connect the components across the board. Then solder two pieces of hookup wire to the board to be used as power leads. Next, add the amplifier's audio input wires. These will run from the audio jack to the amplifier. Now we'll install the wires which will connect the amplifier circuit to the speaker driver itself. Finally, plug the LM386 amp chip into the socket so that the little dot on the top of the chip will be in the upper left. That's it. You've just built an amplifier. Carefully check the hole board to make sure you've connected everything to the right holes according to the instructions. Then flip it over and check your soldering for any missed joints or accidental shorts between traces with a magnifying glass. If you see a solder bridge between two traces, run a knife point between the traces to scrape it away. Trace the shape of your speaker on paper, then cut it out and use it as a template to mark your speaker box for cutting. Cut out the hole using a rotary tool with a cutoff disc, and then sand the edges smooth. Next, place the speaker itself on the box to mark the mounting holes. Drill the speaker mounting holes, then mark and drill holes for the power jack and audio jack in the corner on the back of the box. Place the circuit board inside the box near the jacks, then mark and drill the mounting holes, which correspond to two of the corner holes on the circuit board. Solder the audio ground wire from your amplifier circuit board to the outer tab of the audio jack. Solder the signal wire to both the left and the right signal tabs of the jack, then mount the jack in the enclosure from the inside. You mount the power jack from the outside, so first pass the power wires through the nut, washer, and mounting hole. Solder the ground wires to the outer tab and the power wires to the inner tab, then mount the jack with the nut on the inside of the case. 
To mount the circuit board, pass the screws through from the outside and slip on the plastic standoffs inside. Slide the circuit board onto the screws and install the nuts. The speaker needs an acoustically transparent fabric grill to protect it. You can use speaker grill cloth, woven cane material, metal screen, anything that sound can easily pass through. Most speakers will also need a gasket to keep the speaker cone from hitting the grill. We recommend sheet cork, but you can also use stiff foam or solid cardboard. Use the speaker frame as a template for the outside of the gasket and its mounting holes, and the cabinet speaker hole as a template for the inside of the gasket. Cut out the gasket with a hobby knife. Lay the grill in place, then the gasket, the speaker, and install them with screws and nuts. For a really clean look, use flathead screws and these nice finishing washers. They look like grommets. Then solder the positive speaker wire to the positive terminal and the negative wire to the negative terminal. For the best base, seal up any gaps or air leaks in the box with hot glue or caulk. Or if you don't want to seal it permanently, you can use adhesive foam or felt to seal the lid. Then stuff the box with pillow filling and close it up. Plug your wall adapter into the power jack or solder a power plug to a 9 volt battery snap to use battery power. Now hook up your music player using the 1 8 inch audio cable and rock out. The mono box has no volume control, so use your music player's volume control. Also, use any tone controls or equalization on the music player to adjust the sound to your liking. And when you're done, just unplug the power to turn it off. Check out the project page to see how to tweak this circuit to fit different types of speakers, how to adapt the power for a car or a boat, and share your ideas, improvements, and other builds. And as always, have fun.